On today's show, the guys are talking the good, bad, and the ugly of online learning during all of this pandemic. We've also got an update from the folks at the East Initiative. All that and more up next on the EduTech Guys. You're listening to the EduTech Guys, edutechguys.com. Hello and welcome to EduTech Guys. I'm David Henderson. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. Yeah, welcome to the show. We're back again. We're like, yeah. the, we're like the Backstreet Boys. We're back. All right. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I've got a, a beard. Um, I, I've, I've actually, you know, I think most people were gaining weight during the quarantine. I've lost like 15 pounds. No, so really? No, I, I, yeah, I found it. I yeah. found it. Did you find it? <laughs> you know, it's funny how, how often I get up and I, I just clean the top half of my body for Zoom. <laughs> Wait, that, that didn't sound right, did no, it? No, no, right. not, not at all, sir. Not at all. <laughs> You know, that's my one of my favorite things I've seen since so many schools have moved to online learning. All these teachers that are uh, that are just uh, that are, have now given up and they just get up, they pull their hair up or they the men just, you know, they don't even shave. They just put something on and just teach your class like, hey, this is what I look like. This is called quarantine casual. This is what this is. Uh, I have to tell you, I've done several trainings, you know, professional development training. So this is me teaching other teachers how to do certain things. And I can't tell you how many times <laughs> the cameras come up. And I mean, there's some people are still in bed. Some people, like you said, like you said, they might put their hair up. They might not. They're just <laughs> hanging out. I mean, I'm just like, okay, here we go. That's crazy. But you know, hey, I get it. I completely get it because that's a uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at. You know, it's interesting. That's what I. You know, we were talking. Hey, we've got we've got an East update. We should do a quick show. We haven't done a show again in, in a few weeks uh, because we just we've been quarantined. We haven't really. I guess it's really interesting when you're not around people. We don't really have a lot of uh, of stuff to talk about. I mean, I guess also the, the web is just overwhelmed right now with teachers you know, putting out stuff. And and that made me think of a good topic today, the good, the bad, and the ugly of online learning. And, uh, you know, lately, as you notice, David knows this. And if you follow us on Twitter, you notice that we've posted some stuff about, come on, teachers, slow your roll. You know, you're, you're most of you're doing more work now than you've ever done in the classroom. So <laughs> right. please well, calm down a little bit. I, I will say, you know, um, just kind of taking the, the order as we laid it out there. Um, you know, I, in terms of good, I think one of the things that um, it's one of the things that we've done in education uh, for like as long as education's been around, and and we as tech guys are very familiar with with doing this. But I think um, I'm not sure teachers have had to necessarily uh, do this, and that is to pivot on a dime at a moment's notice and completely change whatever you're doing. Um, you know, in the corporate world, uh, with all of their ideal situations, et cetera, et cetera, you know, th they'll take six months to a year to roll something out, blah, blah. Yeah. If we're lucky, we get, you know, uh, summer break. And usually it's not even that long. A lot of times we have to turn and pivot, you know, during the three day Thanksgiving break or something along those lines. And to see and, and hear and experience what a lot of these educators have done in terms of taking what they have known, some of them, honestly, for decades, they've, they're, they're taking their education methods and, and, pedagogy and you name it and flipping it on its head in order to attempt to offer online learning. You talk about good. That to me is one of the best things that I have seen come out of this. You know, and I think that's true. And and I think what's real, I just mentioned this today with a young man this morning and we were having a discussion about uh, the market and what's going on out there. And I said, what's really interesting that's happening right now is how many schools and businesses are realizing exactly what can be done online and how that is going to change the landscape of everything moving forward. Like, you know, how much we're actually accomplishing staying at home, working remotely, 
And it's not just staying at home. It's the ability to work and teach remotely. That's the good that's coming out of this now. And, and the stuff that we've learned and now, you know, I'm going to be a big shout out to all the techs that do educational technology. You know, we've been prepping for this our entire careers. So <laughs> we, we, uh, we knew this was coming. And we, I think everybody really stepped up. It was just kind of like here, you know, what teach from home here, hold my beer. Let me show you this. And so, you know, uh, some of us might've gone out, which we did and put a few extra access points outside for some parking lots and others have taken it to the next level of, you know, getting hot spots for their kids and, and moving that program forward. And, and I think that there's another good that's going to come from that is that, um, we're going to make sure that the government and uh, educational entities and everyone understands that the Internet is now a, a kind of a basic necessity, especially when it comes to education. Uh, the Internet is a basic necessity and we, we really need to get it in the hands of all of our kids. Yeah, I, I think one thing that should I, I I don't know that it will, but one thing that should come out of this is the realization that the Internet is not an add on to the communication services that are provided, you know, um, back way back in the day when telephone service was first being rolled out and they had certain initiatives in order to get telephone access to rural folks because, you know, powers that be recognized that 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 was a medium of communication that essentially is essential. I, I'm repeating myself there, I know, but, um, you know, it's, it's an essential <laughs> part of our existence. You know, it's 2020 and the phone line has been replaced by, you know, internet lines and, and fiber lines, you know, and and I know I'm using very incorrect terms, but just trying to break it down, you know, but, but internet is the new telephone and that should be a priority across the board. Truly that no one should be without access. Exactly. And, and, and then that maybe actually leads us into the bad. And that's another of the bad we've learned about this is how many of our students and families are woefully unprepared uh, to do online learning. You know, they don't have uh, they don't have the, the, that necessity. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to throw out as a bad is, is that what I kind of said at the first, you know, um, I just think the teachers, some teachers uh, ha- have overwhelmed the students just a bit. Um, I think we forget that this is an unprecedented time of being trapped at home. And for kids, uh, adults might not seem like they're trapped. You know, they're going to Walmart or they're going to the grocery store or they're some are still going to work, you know, with their social distancing and everything. But the majority of our kids are confined at this point and they're they're trapped in the house. They don't have transportation. They there's you know, they can go outside in the yard. But it's also that stigma of, you know, this is scary. All the news says and all that anybody's talking about are people are dying and people are getting sick. And, you know, I, as a little kid now, suddenly everybody's wearing masks. That's got to be really traumatizing for a lot of smaller children is like. We have to wear the mask so we don't get sick. You know, you and I, we've talked about this before. We grew up in the time of, you know, any day the Russians could push the button and we had to duck and cover. So, you know, that was something we grew up with, but it wasn't every day right in our face the way this is. And I think our teachers, um, some teachers, not every teacher, but just some teachers have uh, need to take that into account. And, and, and so do the, the schools. And, and maybe maybe I'm being a, that's it. Maybe I'm jumping the gun. The teachers are only doing what their bosses are telling them to do. Well, I, I, I think um, so. There's a couple of things that you covered. Um, uh, I think we see two extremes. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot that fall in the middle, but but let's talk about the extremes. We have, like you mentioned, the teachers who are trying to overwhelm their students with, you know, content and requirements. Um, my daughter is a senior this year, um, and, and she's taking online college courses and they, the college, the colleges are pretty much acting like nothing has changed at all. So they still have everything that was due. In fact, she even had a, uh, one teacher that said, well, um, since you're at home now uh, and you're not going to school, um, we, I'm actually going to add to your load, which I yeah, thought was ridiculous. absolutely insane. Um, but then, you know, you have the other extreme where regardless of what the district says those teachers should do, we have some folks that aren't doing anything at all. They basically said, eh, yeah, the school's going to provide, you know, paper packets or they can watch TV. In, in Arkansas, uh, we have the uh, Arkansas 
PBS network, uh, which is doing, which is offering, um, uh, video based lessons with, uh, worksheets that go with it. And, and a lot of folks, a lot of teachers were just like, well, man, that, that's what my kids are going to do. You know, I'm at home, they're at home, we're not doing anything. And so that to me is that that's bad in, in both, you know, directions. Of course, anything is when you go to extremes. And then just to touch on what you said about the kids being at home and, and not quite understanding, you know, it's not just little kids. Like I said, I, you know, my daughter's a senior and she can't, you know, this, this is, this is a time in her life where she's supposed to be, you know, with her friends and hanging out and getting ready for prom and graduation. And, and you know, she's got a boyfriend and, you know, uh, she can't go see him and, and how hard that is all from, from a parent perspective to say, I'm really sorry, but you know, you just, you can't right now, uh, you know, you, you can't go see him. And and then from her perspective of, you know, I, this, this doesn't make any sense. You know, he's at home. He doesn't see anybody. We're at home. We don't see anybody. Why can't we, you know? And it's just, it, it's a, it's a, it's a hard time all around for the kids themselves, uh, let alone the teachers, the administrators, the tech folks. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and I think you jumped right into the ugly of it. And and that's the ugly of it is that, you know, I my heart does actually break for all the seniors out there because you're right. This is like a joyful time for them. It really is. Every senior that you can think of, um, uh, you know, it's uh, I did all this work. I, I'm at the end here. I'm about to become an adult. You know, <laughs> I'm about to change. My life's about to change. And here we are. We've shut everything down and we've canceled everything. And and, and that's the ugly. And I, I'd like to say, you know, what I said about teachers, let me talk about the ugly of that side. You know, our teachers have children, too. Our teachers are also stressed in at the house with their children, trying to teach their children and this new norm of, you know, quarantine and stay home. And that's the ugly of it is that we're expecting them to, you know, step up while they're also trying to do the same thing all the rest of us are doing, uh, just keeping uh, normalcy to life for their children and their family. And, you know, another ugly that I find is, is that, even in education, you know, most educational entities have their money. We're paying our teachers. We're paying our people. But a lot of our people are not working. We've got custodians. We've got maintenance people. We've got food service people um, that if they don't come to work, they're not getting paid. You know, and that's 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 the ugly side of all of this is that how many people are going without and are in some dire straits, you know, and, and the, the little stimulus money is cute and all, but that's not going to keep paying that mortgage and keep paying the electric bill and keep paying for food and keep, keep the lights on and the internet and everything else. That's, that is the ugly of it, I think also. And the other ugly, I think is the amount of school districts who might've jumped the gun and are spending an exorbitant amount of money, uh, just trying to provide something when you know, the school districts that I think are doing a great job, and I'd like to, I'd like to say that mine is included in this, and I, I know yours is, is that, and the majority of them are, and it's just as simple as making a phone call. That's pretty much it. Calling those kids or zooming with those kids, just so your kids know that you're thinking about them, and you're, you know, you want them to keep learning, and that when it all is over with, you're going to be right there waiting for them. I think that's a that's a really good thing that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, all of that together, um, in terms of the ugly, uh, I, I think what and and I, I, you know, I'm not a scientist or a medical professional or whatever, but um, I, I think that uh, there's there's a huge. Of course, you know, people are tired of being cooped up, and and I understand, but. By the same token, we can't all just go out running willy nilly all over the place or we're going to be in a much worse position than we were. And I think I really do. I I think in this sort of push to try to get back to whatever the freak normal was or what the normal will be um, (laughs) running. willy That's what's normal. Yeah, Um, I I truly I, I am truly concerned that in the rush to try to put things back in place uh, that we're going to open ourselves to um, sort of a resurgence that was worse, almost like, you know, the um, the cure being worse than the, than the disease. And, and I I I, mm-hmm. I worry about that. Um, but I, I think yeah. in terms of um uh, in terms of the ugly, I think you pretty much, you know, covered that, hit the nail on the head. And, and the upside to all of this is that hopefully um, 
in in some ways, whatever those ways look like, we, we probably won't even know for a while. Maybe, maybe there are some things that will change for the better because of this. Um, I, I will tell you one of my other concerns is that um, because we do what we do in education and turn on a dime and monitor and adjust and flip the switch and, you know, we we just put our heads down and and trudge forward and figure out how it's going to go. Um that unfortunately that leads to people saying, oh, well, see, they can do it on what they have. So they don't need more money. They don't need more internet. They don't need, you know, more training. They don't need any of that because they did it anyhow. So, you know, even on the two dimes that we're giving them, they managed to make it through. No, that's not, that that's not the way to look at this. And, and I truly hope there are folks out there in, in the respective positions who take a look at the the solutions as a whole and say, yeah, but they need to be recognized that, you know, folks in education, um, I saw there was a meme not long ago that said something like, you know, um, you know, we now understand, you know, parents now understand why, you know, teachers aren't making enough money. I hope that sticks at the end of all of this. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do too. You know, and I, I think it's funny. You're right. Um, uh, the willy nilly. I, I I've been running amok myself. Amok, 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 amok. Anyway, <laughs> I I think that that's been the biggest thing. It's been uh, kind of good for me and hard for me. Is I I don't mind being by myself, but I, I miss my interaction with you know you and my my team at the at, at work. And uh, there's something about that personal connection that and I know that's what the teachers miss. My wife is a junior high band director and she is distraught over not seeing her kids, especially band kids. You know, they're they're not they they get they don't play horns every day and they're not playing music. They they get a little crazy. All right. So, <laughs> not yes. to, not that my wife was not already crazy. Oh, this isn't this isn't going on the web, is it? <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. This is just for us. It's just for us. You, <laughs> hey, you know, one of the best things about being home is I listen to a lot of music lately, and you know, you and I were talking about uh, Ray Stevens. Yes, and, uh, I think it would be great. To, I, we're going to do it no matter what. So, what do you say we play a Ray Stevens song right now? I would. I hope you folks listening would enjoy that. If you don't know Ray Stevens, um, he is an artist from the 70s and 80s and 90s. He's, I think Ray, is he still alive? I think Ray is actually still alive. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, you'd have to, I can't remember. You'd have to Google that real yeah. quick. So. He, he is. He's 81 years old. Yeah, he's go. still alive. He's Yeah, he's still alive. And it was something really interesting. Well, anyway, let's play a song. Uh, one of my favorites was the Mississippi Squirrel Revival. What do you say we play that one? Sounds good, man. When I was a kid, I'd take a trip every summer down to Mississippi, visit my granny and her antebellum world. I'd run barefooted all day long, climbing trees free as a song. One day, I happened to catch myself a squirrel. Well, I stuffed him down in an old shoebox and punched a couple holes in the top. When Sunday came, I snuck him into church. I was sitting way back in the very last pew, showing him to my good buddy Hugh. When that squirrel got loose, went totally berserk. But what happened next is hard to tell. Some thought it was heaven, some thought it was hell. But the fact that something was among us was plain to see. As the choir sang, I surrender all, the squirrel ran up Harv Newland's coveralls. And Harv leaped to his feet and said, something's got a hold on me. Yeah! The day the squirrel went berserk. In the first self-righteous church In that sleepy little town of Pascagoula It was a fight for survival That broke out in revival They were jumping the pews and shouting hallelujah Well, Harv hit the aisle dancing and screaming Some thought he had religion, others thought he had a demon And Harv thought he had a weed eater loose and he screwed the moves he fell to his knees to plead and beg, and that squirrel ran out of his breeches leg, unobserved, to the other side of the room. All the way down to the Amen pew, where sat Sister Bertha better than you, who'd been watching all the commotion with sadistic glee. <laughs> Should have seen that look in her eyes when that squirrel jumped her garters and crossed her thighs. She jumped to her feet and said, Lord, have mercy on me. As that squirrel made laps inside her dress, she began to cry and then to confess the sins and make a sailor blush with shame. 
She told of gossip and church dissension, but the thing that got the most attention was when she talked about her love life. And then she started naming names the day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting, hallelujah. Seven deacons and the pastor got saved And $25,000 was raised And 50 volunteered for missions in the Congo on the spot <laughs> And even without an invitation There were at least 500 rededications And we all got rebaptized whether we needed it or not Now you've heard the Bible story, I guess How he parted the waters for Moses to pass All the miracles God has wrought in this old world one I'll remember till my dying day is how he put that church back on the narrow way with a half-crazed Mississippi squirrel. The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting hallelujah. The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous Church in a stupid little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping Man, I love me some Ray Stevens. That yes. was a, that was a, <laughs> he's so funny. That, that one is hilarious, especially when, uh, when the, at the very end, when he says, you know, 500 people came to re- rededicate their lives and $40,000 was raised or whatever, you know, it just, that just makes me laugh so hard. But, you know, it's really interesting. Most people only think of Ray Stevens from like Guitar Zan or The Streak or, you know, even the Mississippi Squirrel Revival, but he actually won a Grammy for the song Everything is Beautiful, uh, which is Everything is Beautiful which is a a wonderful tune Uh, and the song Misty. He won a Grammy for that one. He was nominated 18 times. Um, And the only two songs that he was ever nominated for country for, for comedy was uh, I need your help. Barry Manilow. And uh, (laughs) would Jesus wear a Rolex? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, man. (laughs) I love those titles. I need your help, Barry Manilow. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to lie. One time I fell down in the woods and I screamed that out. I need your help, Barry Manilow. No, <laughs> I thought he would come to me, you know, like on a cloud and save me. But that was uh, that didn't happen. No, I, I you guess know what not. Can, you, you know what could save us? How about an East update? Uh, the gang sent us one and we told everybody we had one. So I guess we better play it, shouldn't we? All right. Sounds good to me. Hi there, I'm April Jackson, and this is your East Update. This week, we learned how facilitator Nicole Pena of East at Hellstern Middle School partnered with family friend Kevin Cohn to connect students in Italy with the principles of East. My name is Kevin Cohn, and I'm from Southern California, but I have been teaching in Italy for over 15 years, and uh, specifically, I work at an international school where it's basically uh, K through 12 and my current position is language coordinator that oversees the entire English language program both for middle school and high school and my as far as my teaching background it's both in science computers and in English I, actually it was it was kind of coincidence because um, um, Nicole's husband, which is my best friend, they came out to visit us and we were, and since she teaches and I teach, we were thinking about doing a kind of a project, a collaboration project, and basically East was the bridge. East was what kind of uh, um, made it kind of uh, a little bit concrete and, and accessible. Um, I knew nothing about East. Um, and, but, you know, then again, I'm, since I'm teaching outside the United States, I, I think from a, an educator point of view, I, I, I do feel like um, uh, not really lost, but I feel like I'm kind of behind as far as what the American system does. But anyways, as far as East, we've done STEM projects in the past, and I was trying to promote something in my school um, just to make something engaging. And uh, Nicole was talking about East. 
and I personally looked at yeast as um, a, a an upgraded version of what I would consider a, a traditional STEM lesson because it seemed like um, it was a platform to do uh, a lot of projects and doing those projects we used uh, a wide range of let's say tools because I look at yeast as a, as a big tool um, and always as an educator I'm always looking for something new to do in class and so I really liked yeast as far as what they offered um, and uh, even though I don't know much as far as what yeast can do um, and the, the thing that I liked most is the idea that I was able to collaborate with an American school. I was able to communicate with uh, American students uh, and that we, we kind of had an objective and I, we tried to use, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nicole, East principles um, to try and reach our goals and to do something together. If you're interested in learning more about East programs and their global partners, visit our website at eastinitiative.org or follow us on social media at The East Initiative. I'm April Jackson, and this has been your East Update. Hey, thank you so much to April Jackson and the folks at the East Initiative Update for bringing that to us once again here on EduTech Guys. We appreciate that so much. And uh, you can definitely check them out, eastinitiative.org. Yeah, definitely. And don't forget, you know, you can always find us on the web, www.edutechguys.com. Heck, just go to Google. I say it all the time. Uh, type in EduTech Guys. You're going to find us on social media. That's all you got to type in, uh, EduTech Guys. We're out there on all the uh, social, the tweets and the twinks and the binks and the bops and the Facebooks. We're all out there. Well, and now we're, you know, it. it's fixed for a while there. You could search for EduTech guys. <laughs> there was some weird stuff that came up, uh, but uh, we, we, we got that fixed. It's all taken care of. So it's all. Yeah. Just normal. a little. Yeah, just a little heads up. We are actually uh, our our parent company, Amalgamated Toast. Um, that's actually where we're moving everything. So here in the next in the the, the near future, uh, we'll be branding everything under Amalgamated Toast. But Edutech Guys will still be edutechguys.com. It'll still link it to us. And uh, but uh, you'll also find out some other projects that we work on and some stuff that's uh, not in education uh, that is in a social media and music and things like that. So we hope you enjoy it. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Looking for, look, yeah, yeah. And, and we're definitely looking forward to that uh, new partnership with Amalgamated Toast and seeing where all where, where it all goes. Going to be going to be a lot of fun. So in the meantime, though, we are yeah, we are yeah. still here. We're still here, and we like toast. So. Uh, <laughs> So listen, it's been a great show. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check us out on the web. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night or a snow-covered winter's day. And everybody's beautiful in their own way under God's heaven the world's gonna find me you've been listening to the edutech guys edutechguys.com <laughs>